So this is great. This is, wow, Court Book of Assemblies and Hundreds. So this is in the National Archive, one of the National Archives files. This is from Sussex, Brighton and Hove. Um, reference WIN53. Wow, so they do have... Um, they did have records of the hundreds courts, although I don't know to what detail they were recorded. This is like um, court book of assemblies in hundreds. So it's kind of like a collection of um, items. Numbered for and labelled hundreds and sessions book from 5th of June 10th to the 4th October 28th. Um, 1581 so fifth wow 1500s 1581 um so um so this is even before the petition of right so they've got magna carta at this time but they don't yet have the petition of right reaffirmation um wow so they take they're actually recording the hundred sessions or at least listing. Let's have so <clears throat> the end papers contain notes. Edward Mil Milton of Mayor of um, Winchell see some pious phrases and a list of names and at the end. The contents as before, normally recorded elections, towns and seat port business elections of barons to Parliament, in panelling of the grand jury. So they got they got jury at hundred sessions. They got a jury at the hundred sessions. Acknowledgements and conveyances with the town, recognizances to appear in court, to abide by the provisional laws and to keep keep orderly. You see, they got the mayor. The thing with these, right, is they've got the mayor in a lot of these sessions. Because they've got the mayor in um sixteen seventy. They've actually got the mayor in um, 1670 so hmm in the court with the aldermen it's almost like might as well have the council in there you know never mind judging making planning decision orders you've got the grand jury in there never mind having councillors to go and represent everyone you've got everyone in there it's almost like the council f f have, have become the grand. The council think that they are the grand jury, don't they nowadays? Um, Recognise and assist appear in court and abide by the provisions and laws and to keep odd ale houses and leases of town property. The following items have been selected as worthy of special mention. Well, some of them. Um, so there's probably more items than what they're just putting on here in this collection. Innkeeper recognizances by Agnes Chapman, widow Maurice Houston, um, Michael Garnsey of 1568. Butcher Bounty, Victoria Town, but Grave of Hastings. Mr. John Love appointed a special attorney to attend the sergeants and other learned counsel and exhibit to them such grievances as this poor town hath articulated, and as shall be thought met for the better preferment of the same to ease the same of the great intolerable charges and burdens into the same allotted William Johnson town clerk to attend on him. So they've got... Um, Got sergeants on the council exhibit to them such grievances as this poor town have articulated. Um, you gotta be kidding me! So they they, they got um, they've actually got a, a lawyer to represent them, the town, in their grievances to to the council, including the sergeants. It's almost like in that William Penn case when they've got a couple of sheriffs there and the alderman and the mayor, isn't it? And then that recorder. 
Anthony Hatton has sold to Lawrence Button his interest in a piece of ground at Monday Market, 1568, by John Durin of Winchester Yeoman to keep an inn, a bond, hospitals let for 10 years to William Johnson, as Thomas Spouse held them, recognising this as, as victuallers by Anne Chapman with her. Somatil Lawrence, Bridgeford, Mooney, Michael, Bess and Marion Licensed as Tipler. Mr Shepherd to judge whether the lease of the hospitals which Robert Jackson claims in the right of William Johnson deceased to be valid and whether it remains in force during the life of Thomas Spruce to have a place of abiding fit for a town clerk. <laughs> Sam Goosey! William Appleton appointed town clerk and to have a place for abiding fit for a town clerk. you got to be kidding me. The clerk's in court making a case that he should have a place of abiding that is uh, fit for his position. Who's going to pay for it? So he gets a job as a town clerk. So then, it, oh, it's convenient for the clerk uh, while he's on duty to pop into the court and say, oh, actually, uh, can you, uh, you appoint me a, a, a house fit, fit for my position? Should have give Sam Goosey the um, freedom of um, Kirklees rather than um, Patrick Stewart. Um, piece of ground in quarter one formerly let to Edward Awood. And if you don't let for him, it hasn't paid full amount of 1570. 12 ferry let to um, testimonial seal for Mr. Thomas Guildford concerning Holy Rood. Holy Rood, I wonder if that, that's. That cat, that must be a different holy rood, not in Scotland. These are all in this county. Um, Licensed to keep ale house. They all, these all, these are all local matters. So at this point, <clears throat> so at this point in 1571, you're like, <clears throat> less, so you're like, um, six, so you're like about 10, um, oh no, sorry. Um, you like a hundred nine? This is ninety years. This is like still another. You still another like ninety. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it's still about ninety. You still like ninety years off. Um, the Tumultuous Petitioning Act. So you don't have to... These, you don't have to actually um, get any consent to um, petition Parliament. They haven't got parliaments all the time in 1571. They don't always have... In fact, they had very few in the... Um, few and far between an electing people. So p people aren't going to be petitioning Parliament because there isn't one. And they're going to be taken up in the local courts and or you have to wait for the assizes because it's only like twice a year or those quarter sessions are only like um i think they go back to 1583 but that you they're only like the assizes are only twice a year and the quarter sessions are four times a year so these are like they're pretty much the general i think if you've got a serious crime as well i think that you've got to wait for you've got to wait for the assizes or quarter sessions for certain serious offenses when you've actually got the king's Justices coming round, not just like the local justices of the peace, like the proper, um, you know, like the higher judges. These are all just local matters. See, so, so, copy of a Royal Commission of Inquiry addressed to the mayors and bailiffs of the ports with letters of attendance from the Lord Warden to summon a jury to meet the commissioners. The subject of the inquest is not stated um, St Giles Church a bit, it's a decree folding a market weekly Winchester on Friday to follow the calling of Tennessee's John Tall John Curry's. so this, this is all just local random kind of like 
Do you have to get permission for all of these? Where, who sets out? Where, where, where was all the legislation that you had to get? Um, John Pearl, we admitted as free man. Oh, decree concerning making Freeman also a decree repealing an act, 7th of April 1510, again speaking opprobrious words against the mayor and jurats. Jeffrey Pearl we admitted as Freeman. So speaking appro opprobrious words against the mayor and jurats. Also, we're repealing an act of 7th of April, 1510. Wow, that's quite... A... Hey, what, can they, can they do that in a local area? Is this like a local act or what? Just if Parliament um, are formed, how do they get, get acts made and changed? I don't... That's quite a bit of a strange um, one to have pop up, isn't it? So, apparently... So, 1688, freedom of speech... Um, I don't know if this necessarily gave them freedom of speech under the Magna Carta. Well, I suppose that you get judged by your peers, don't you? Um, so if you if you if you know, I guess um, if they got a jury in there, the jury's not going to be at all. So that the jury's going to um, <laughs> the jury will the that means they can't speak. You have free speech to the jury when you're giving you evidence or whatever. Um, I think it seemed like. In 1670, I think that William Penn was um, pretty much saying what he wanted to the jury. Um, although he's not going to be, if he was nasty to him, I can't see him. Um, I can't see them um, coming up with a not guilty verdict. Maybe they didn't. Um, what was the charge there? If he was already in front of them for something, what was he doing in there in the first place? He's been previous words against the mayor and Jewards. Maybe they didn't have indemnity then, but it, unless it, it, this is like it's another offence was in for something else, um, unless he's not appearing as a victim or a witness... Unless he was appearing as a victim or a witness and then the jury weren't necessarily um, going along savvy with it and he was a bit annoyed with them. Um, but that's an act. 50, I'll write that down. I wonder what act that is. 1510. Repealing an act of 7th of April 1510. Can speak in opprobrious words. Speaking a pro words. Speaking opprobrious words against the mayor and Jewett, hmm. 1573. Decree concerning the election of mayors who from henceforth shall or the elect shall always be chosen by all the free men of this town. They present anything to the country notwithstanding, 1573. Decree concerning the election of mayors who from henceforth shall always be chosen by by all the free men of this town. So they're only just getting into probably setting out elected mayors in 1573. I, I think that you got like, you know, what when you've got like the um, Justices of the Peace Act, I think starts kind of 1300, didn't it? Um, so, so this was for the mayor though. You've also got mayors doing council business and um, justice as well, I think, as well. Until they stopped them being able to do it. Both um, a small boat called Thomas Vadova with a tackle implement sent a pearl now in the Chamberlain's hands is sold to John Wigsell for a fine post <laughs> On John Peck for 
using persuasion at the mayoral election. A fine impose for John Peck for using persuasion at the mayoral election is remitted as imposed on the testimony of only one man. Well, they're getting loads of persuasion in the um, London mayoral election. It's gone to pot now. John Love Drew at dismissed for showing a naughty and rebellious letter against the Queen's Majesty. That's 1573. That's in before the Tumultuous Petitioning Act. John Love Durat dismissed for showing a naughty and rebellious letter against the Queen's Majesty. Hey, I wonder where my letters are to the Queen. I haven't found. I don't know where they are. I've got I've got at least two or three letters from the Queen somewhere, but I don't know where I've put them. I might not have read one of them. Um, no, I have read the ones. I did read them all. It's I've got a letter from Parliament that I haven't opened from a while back because I lost my patience with them. They just re they just reply with like they just brick wall it, so I can't bother opening them. I've I've got one letter from Parliament that I never opened from quite a few years ago in a cream envelope. I have got my letters from the Queen somewhere. Um, don't know where they are though. They're somewhere. I'm, I'm thinking I must have scanned them all. Thirty-eight decree that Mister Peck shall at the next hundred prove his title to the windmill and show how the town was dispossessed thereof. Thirty-eight decree. Thirty-eight decree that Mister Peck shall at the next hundred prove his title to the windmill and show how the town was dispossessed thereof. Mr Love to show title to a barn or stable now occupied by Mr Knight and to the shops at the church gate memoranda concerning the conviction before the court of star... Oh, right. Oh, wow, look. Thirty-two. Mr. Peck shall at the next hundred prove his title to to the isn't to the wind. I forgot about windmills, and show how he, the town was dispossessed. Well, we have all we've all been dispossessed because we don't have any saying anything anymore, and we haven't been privy to all what's been going on. We don't really have. Would have been able to get it in the civil court in front of a grand jury if we challenged the council to council tax even as well. All those people who have been... You see, all these people on verbs who've been challenging the council tax as well. You see, when the when when the court when when the council hires a court out, um, you know, I've been thinking recently in Magna Carta. It's, if Magna Carta clause thirty eight and thirty nine are still in force, and you got a right, you got, you, we've got a right to a jury. They removed them, but I read some of the other day in one of the um, some of these acts. Is that nineteen thirty three one? Is like the the um, end of the administration of justices act. But then there's also the um, common law proceeding common law proceedings act in eighteen fifty four as well. And then what's the other one? Is that eighteen forty? 1848, Summary Jurisdiction Act, or is that the same one? No, Common Law Procedure Act and the Summary Jurisdiction Act. I I think, I, you know, Summer, I think, didn't one of those guys on Verbs say that he wanted a jury and he got a right to a jury? So what he did is he sent him to the Crown Court. But I think, I'm sure you've got the right to have one in the Magistrates Court. They don't have them, but I think you've got the right to them. So, so, so what they did... I think they sent him to the Crown Court. So he said he wanted a jury, didn't he? That guy on Verbs, that guest, he said, I want a jury. I got asked if I wanted to have my case heard summar summa summa summarily or um, by indictment or whatever at the Crown Court. 
But they asked me what I wanted. I thought they're supposed to decide what it is, how serious it is. You're not meant, I don't think you're supposed to hear summary cases at the um, Crown Court. So if, if it was summary and you said, I wanted a jury, how can I send you to the Crown Court? That's something to look into. You know, I actually think that you, I think according to Magna Carta, I'm sure that through some of these acts that I, I, I haven't read them all, but I'm pretty sure that through some of these, I've, I noticed it the other day when I was looking at some of them, um, just to get like a brief gist of it. And um, I'm sure I noticed something about, there was a paragraph that said like you, that there was a paragraph in one of these, I can't remember which one it was, 1933 or 1854, or it was um, 1848, one of the summary jurisdiction acts or common law procedure or the um, administration of justice. One of them I read it and I'm like, it said that, um, that if you request it, essentially you, you, you've got an entitlement to a jury, but you've got a like, basically you, you've got a you've got to state you um, right and put a claim in for it. So I'm starting to wonder if people can do that now in these um, council tax cases um, and things like that. And and also, what about these judicial review? Um, and, and all kinds of different civil actions and proceedings. Because it says, the thing is, when you're getting dispossessed of things, it says, like, e even if it's, like, um, your effects, you know, like the times things that make you happy in the area, you know, public amenities and things like that, you, the council are selling a lot of things off. Um, I don't know whether you can actually challenge the council or, you know, oppose them for selling things off. Churchgate memory concerning the conviction before the court of Star Chamber of Goddard White and John Whitfield concerning a riot. So there was a riot and they actually had to they had to go into the Star Chamber. That's one of the Parliament um courts. So why were they do you get a picture that the next hundred prove his title to the show sure how time was depossessed? Oh, this is a different guy now. But honestly, when occupied by Mr. Knight and to the shops at the church, keep up because of the courage. Why would they be before? What's a memoranda? Looks like there's something happening in the Star Chamber, and then it got, they had to go to another hearing at the Hundreds Court. 39 agreed that Mr. Robert White may take down an old house belonging to... But all like that to get permission to take down houses. This is what's happening now. People are ruining everything. When other people actually like... People are coming in with loads of money and just like, you know, just um, demolishing things or changing it when actually people like the way it is in the whole area. If they don't like it, why do they buy it? If you don't like some, I wouldn't buy a house if I didn't like it. If I wanted to take it down to one brick and then rebuild it again, it happened opposite us here, um, you know. But a lot of the time, uh, the, the majority of the time, a lot of these people are cheating planning. Even now, in you know the twentieth cent, in you know twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, people are just you know I know um, things are being done, and then they're no, I'll, I'll be going to the bus stop like, and then suddenly it'll gone, and then there's a notice appears up, and I look at it, and it's like oh. You know, it says here, um, time to object has passed. And I'm like, just a minute, how's the objection time passed when I've been catching the bus here, right, on a regular basis, and there was no there was no notice there. You know, they'd just gone and done it. Um, they, they put a notice up after it's passed. It's like a common trick that a lot of these agents do, a lot of these estate agents and the people. It's like not the actual council, but the person who's, who's representing the applicant, um, who, who's uh, representing the applicant's application and dealing with uh, it all. And they've got the obligation. Sometimes the obligation is not on the council to put it up, but on the other person. Depending, and um, you don't get any council people going properly checking them. So, 
it, it's happened here. It's happened in my own village um, when they put um, loads of things they've done. Um, still going on now. Neighbour and to rebuild it in any place in Winchelsea where he may lawfully do so. I also promised that when a brewer came to town, he shall have the town brew house at 20 cents to Mr. East above the rent. Mr. E occupy the Hop Garden freely during the term. Hop Garden. Recognizance for 10 people newly come to the town. An act against hogs. So, so do you get the town shall the, the town sergeant shall take a fee gathering the streets and pose between an agreement to sell the hull of a wrecked boat at Strand to join to John Lake. Henry Fame, William Summers and John Durant who are to pay salvage money and acquaint the town of Selage, their width and trade as a boat of Winchelsea only. First the boat was sold to John Hindle for the county Cornwall. The owners of the clay pits, town, dyke against Mr. Morris, Mr. Stephens, by bed of the night, to Tinker's Garden. The horse said the house where George Prince lives in the adjoining house, the house between the newspaper and the adjoining house. Because the mayor is informed that the windmill at the King's Green belongs to the town, John Pett not to take it down or remove its implements. So these are actually caught. So the, the, this is like the hundreds court sessions. And they're actually, they're actually doing planning permission. They're actually doing planning. They're doing planning consent for building and adjustments in the hundred sessions. In like fifteen, in like the mid fifteen hundreds. So they're doing all the cons. They're doing all the consents for the building and planning permissions in the hundreds court sessions. So that's like that. That's falling. So that is bringing. Planning consents under Magna Carta, the right of not to be dispossessed of your possessions or have anything changed or adapted or in the areas and things like that um, without lawful judgment by the law or by the judgment of the peers. So Magna Carta is still in, in thought. That, that sets the precedent of law and statute framework that Planning applications, because this is after Magna Carta, remember, but this is before 1661, although this, this is also before Petition of Right as well. The, so Magna Carta is still in effect. This, that, that four clauses of Magna Carta, including that one, are still in force in England. So from 1574 till now, the structural underlying foundational legislation is that these type of actions are covered by uh, Magna Carta and Judgment of Peers because it falls under um, depossession and um, uh, being removed of effects and so forth of, of areas and uh, people and things and possessions and, and hand, houses and land. So Judgment of the Peers you got a right to judgment of the peers when it comes to buildings and houses and and uh, possessions and things and planning, planning, it, 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 and, and all the rest of the legislation has to be compatible with that. That the rest of the legislation of England must be compatible and not contradictory to the Magna Carta, particularly that that clause because that's still in force. So that means that well, the council the council is meant to be representing the opinion of the local people when you write a petition, right? And the council themselves are meant to be selfless. This is what cultures the council watch are getting into now. I'm trying to teach them this, but I still don't think that they've um, got a, got into the point yet. So really. 
When the councillor goes into the council chamber that's got the chairman, it's like they had the mayor, the mayor was popping up doing these. You know, they got the mayor in here as well, or not necessarily just the justice of the peace, because a lot of the mayors were, were doing, the mayors are doing the justice of the peace stuff as well. Uh, but they sometimes got sheriffs and so forth, al uh, eldermen and aldermen in there as well, right? But so, they've, so what they've ended up doing is they've split, the, they put all, all of the plan application business from the courts into the council chamber business. I wonder before 1973 when they had the, our council was in Wakefield um, County Council, so before 1973, in the 60s and 50s, I wouldn't have... Oh, no, sorry. The room. So, you see, the thing is, in civil matters, you're meant to have the people making decisions, right? In civil. But... If they've if if they put if they've put this this I wouldn't be surprised if this happened somewhat like eighty around eight mid eighteen hundreds or something between mid eighteen hundreds and nineteen thirty three looking at this. I think that um so you have got a right to the opinion of the people and peers for stuff like this. That is why you that's what the petition to the council's for, or like objections, right? But they're not call, they're not calling a compulsory jury. They're having the councillor is he's elected to represent the people, rather than having a random selection of them. Now, when you collect the signatures, you're actually going out of your way to get consent. The thing with the councillor is they've been elected, and they're usually elected. You know, they rep they represent a political party. Right, or this or that councillor, but the councillor, the councillor can't be a party themselves because there's no such thing uh, as a party. It, you've got a person, but that person has a tendency to certain things that they're pursuing or seeking to pursue, and certain people vote for that person, and and therefore, if no one else intervenes or has a say in certain things, and they leave the councillor to their own devices, then they're going to go about making decisions as it suits the interests of the majority they got the vote for. That's how the political party has control of the council, unless they seek the opinion of the electorate in any particular matter, like they're, they're entitled to enter an opinion when there's a planning objection and object. And the thing is, with the jury, right? I think you only need one. You only need one person on a jury anyway, don't you? To to not. You only need you only need one person on the jury to not agree, don't you? Right. That that's the case in it in civil. Uh, sorry, in, in 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 the criminal court, you only need one person to disagree. Don't you? But, but that's usually against the the um, the charge, you know. So like you make the charge. So the, the criminal charge is equivalent to the application, isn't it? So you you only need one person to say not guilty to the charge. So if you put an application in, you only need one person to say surely no to the application, right? Because they're wanting the application to get approved. The prosecutor is wanting the conviction to be approved, right? But someone's got to defend it. So, really, you know, they do this with the, with these wind turbines now. Apparently, only need one person to object to it. I, I won't be surprised if... Um, I, I won't be surprised if you get down to it that that it actually when somebody in the village objects to something being adapted or changed, when you put an objection in, I won't be surprised if that objection is valid. Although, you know, you've got all this modern uh, planning legislation. But the thing is, they're always meant to be doing it on points of law. But those points of law are only meant to be as persuasive as like a barrister in a criminal case, you know. At the end of the day, if they want, they can just say, yeah, you know, he's just trying to, you know, well, you know, there's, you know, lots of squirrels. I know there are a lot of, go there are a lot of government regulations as well and so forth that are law. I mean, it might be ridiculous to think that, uh, you know, a jury would let someone, you know, um, live in a house that's dangerous or something like that. But, 
you know, if it's, you know, being condemned or something, I don't know what, you're getting into strange territories there. Maybe that might have been one of the reasons why they kind of like, you know, um, but the, the thing, the thing with the, I definitely think the thing with the building and planning, you know, you can make, one person can make an objection and put a strong case, but I think when you get a petition, particularly if you equal 5% of the eight ward, electorate, you're entitled to, that shows that there's enough interest in it. You don't have to go and get every single person in the ward to sign it because then you're doing the ward referendum yourself and you aren't, you aren't liable to have to pay for a ward referendum. The ward referendum is whatever it is, £806 or whatever maximum cap, but I don't have to pay for that. That that's if you get it actions, that's what it is. The council pays well, we all pay for our council tax, so you know all you have to do under the local government act is show there's enough concern for them to have a referendum, but you, you can have a ward one because they, they go by electoral area. So if you've got three thousand people in a village, you might only have to get like um, you know, 500 signatures in order to justify a referendum of that electorate. I can't see how they can... Um, I know that sometimes multiple councillors vote on it, but if the council is council are responsible for that area goes into the council and they've done a referendum on that area, electorate, how, how can they approve planning when it's the equivalent of if they'd have had a civil court grand jury in there, you know? Um, all of the other councillors can't overrule that councillor because it, 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 it would have, you know, I'm, pre I'm pretty certain that the ca the, it's almost like a councillor acting as if they are like, like they're the, where you're like mock jury, you know, in, in a way, um, with the um, chairman there just to save, you know, ramming it full of people, you know. Um, I really think we've been swindled out of all this because you got all these companies getting lawyers to make a strong application planning case, bang loads of facts on the table. So what? You can get like you know a criminal um, prosecutor, you know a, a KC with loads of complicated. Get black belt barrister in there, put a you know complicated case on. You know the jury can just go, no, no, we don't agree with it or whatever. Um, you know it's up to them. You know even regardless of what they've explained the law. Covenant by John Hind of Britrix Castle, Cornwall, the boat he had purchased above shall not be sold to any inhabitants of Rye. Or hill. Church one's extinguished site or hill that the mill stands on to remain unenclosed has agreed to contribute 30 cents towards a key or wharf at the strand where the town sits about I mean you, you could go on this You could go on forever through this. Look at all these. So anyway, wow. So we've so we've actually got these. Um, we've got these hundreds. They got the court books of hundreds. So you get. I didn't know that you had. They had those. So they've got them. And at least they've got them going back to like fifteen eighty one. So that's interesting. We might there might be some going through sixteen eighty eight. Um, and 1661 to 1688, there could be some hundreds, court book of assemblies and hundreds. So that's worth, that's something new that I've learned that we can be looked in. I want, you want to be looking at um, them between 1661 and 1700, uh, and see if there's any that have got any mention of consent to... The Commons, but I type those search words in now, but I can probably narrow the date down. I want to be searching hundreds caught um, books for any 
cases to the House of Commons. He wants to see House of Commons on there and see if they were getting um, a plan for consent. It probably just have notes like this, though. It just might say that, you know, um, it'll just might give notations that they applied for consent to Parliament for this or that, to, or permission to consent, consent for permission to petition Parliament. 